Hi there, I'm Birgit O'Connor and welcome to the World of Watercolor Painting podcast. Now our goal is to keep you motivated, inspired, and just have fun. Now this episode is going to be a little different. Instead of audio only, you'll be able to see the video. So what I'll be doing is talking to some of the students in our interactive course, Bold Rich Saturated Color, along with looking at a couple of their paintings and then a demonstration. And if you like the podcast, make sure to subscribe to the channel so I can keep you updated. Now let's get started and have some fun. And how are you feeling about the project? Well, as I said, I thought it was very difficult, but, um, and I did it twice and I was much happier. I learned a lot from the first go round. So um, I enjoyed it. Oh, good. Even though I struggled some, but. Well, it's not meant to be, you know, because I, what I'm doing here is exactly what I would be doing in my actual workshops to where I am there to teach you not just fill in space or play with it. You know, it's really a learning experience. Yeah. Well, if it was easy, we wouldn't need to be here. Right? Exactly. I mean, I mean, that's that's why I'm here. That's, to learn. I know it looks simple, but it's not. <laughs> And this may not be exactly the right color, but you'll get the idea is that if you go over this, if you glaze over that with a darker value, I just, it's not necessarily going to be blue. Okay, so like you could use some of these darker colors or even a tad darker. If you go darker in your background here, then you start to see all your petals through here. And then here I really like your very gentle color through here and your nice intense shadow, which turned out very, very well. Uh, I think this is beautiful again as is. I think it's really great. Uh, one thing I would do when you have your pencil line is use a... Um, a kneaded eraser and roll over your pencil lines so like right through here just so it doesn't stand out as much but then again it could be like a particular a different kind of style you could do that if you wanted but um, I, I would just think about that and it really has to resonate with you whatever feels good to you and you handled your center beautifully and let's see, it doesn't look like this one rolls over, but that's still, I, I like that. You know, it's almost like this one was more open. Let's take a look at it like that. Yeah, I think that, that's beautiful. You've got a lot of depth in there. Excellent. And having that dark color in the background, very well done. Now, this was my problem paper. So it has all those little spots in there. And I seem, we seem to have problems when we're using the permanent alizarin crimson and, or an indigo, or it's the paper. I've just seen this so often. It just ends up with these little tiny spots. So what I could do, let's say I want to really increase the color. I could either wet it and then go over it again and add multiple layers, or what I can do is I'm going to show you a different approach, and I'm going to go wet on dry, and then I'm going to pull the color. So here, I'm going to take a little, uh, if you're using the permanent alizarin crimson, which I've always liked, and from our last meeting, I think I must have told you that I've also been very disappointed. Uh, it, sometimes it can go muddy, and that depends on what yellow you're mixing it with. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a lot of it, let's mix it in the palette, and then I'm going to take a little... Oh, I didn't put any for fun. I'm going to add a little quinacridone magenta. I always like the quinacridone magenta. Let's get that in there. Okay, so you can see how much water and color I'm mixing. I'm going to go throw a lot in there. And I'm rolling my brush actually just a little bit to break up any of that color. Now that is nice rich color, but it's going to stick if I don't add more water to it. It's just not going to flow. So I'm going to get a little more water in there. So let's look at our puddle. Okay, so hopefully you can get a better idea. And I'm thinking that's just about right. I'm going to load my brush by really sweeping it up 
And let's see, I, I could add a shadow, but I'm not going to. I just want to show you how I'm going to build color wet on dry. So let's say I'm going to go wet on dry. I'm actually getting more water, loading this up. I could use my 30, but I don't usually use my 30 when it comes to the um, applying the color. And the reason being is that it holds so much water. And we, if you're going to do this, you need to move fairly quickly. This is just one way of doing that. And I want to show you options, okay? So let's say we have that. You've got some color right there. I'm taking that number 30. The problem is with this is that it's going to dry faster than I can work. So I'm going to go ahead and wiggle that a little tiny bit. That way I don't have a hard straight line. And I'm not trying to, I want, if you notice, I'm taking my brush, dipping it in water like that, and then I'm going to go along the edge like that. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I do want to release a lot of water. I don't want to, because it'll dry too fast if I, um, if I don't. Okay. Like there's certain paintings that I can talk and paint at the same time. <laughs> but when I'm doing my own, it's a little challenging. Okay, so I'm bringing the water. Now that I have this, I want you to notice we've got rich color in there. But if we look at this line right through there, if I leave it alone, I'm going to have a pigment line because all this color will continue to travel in that water when, until it gets to the edge of wherever the water stopped. So what I could do is either take the number 30 or what I'm going to do is take my hockey brush, get water in there, and then remove some of that extra water. I don't necessarily want to bring more water into it. I'm just going to try to um, pull it out a little bit more so it doesn't stop right there. Try to at least. Okay, so you can see, well, it's not perfect through there, but you get the idea. And then what I'm thinking is I might even change the direction of the paper a little bit. Just soften it a little bit there. So I'm, I'm very happy with that color. It's starting to blossom through there. Do I want to do anything with that? That's what I'm thinking about. I'm going to leave that alone for a minute. I'm going to bring a little more water right up through here. And then I'm thinking if I come in with my 20, that's going to be too big. I want a little, a sort of detail in there, but not a lot. So I'm taking my number 14 blend brush and I'm going to grab my color. And then I'm just going to just change it a little bit. Take that number 30. See, I got it wet. Remove that water, wipe off the excess. And then I'm going to soften it. And I'm actually pressing a little hard, but not too hard, because I don't want to release the water too much. And let's see, I don't want to wipe, and I'm also going along the outside edge. I'm not going right on top, because that can wipe that color right off. OK, so now that has a lot of color. and. That has a potential blossom if I leave it alone. And if I really don't want it there, what I could do is use my uh, hair dryer and then dry it. We've got some funny little edges through here. I'm thinking, does that bother me? That doesn't really bother me. I could go ahead and take care of them with a shadow or, or work on them or leave that as a lip. So I'm going to dry that for just a second. Trying to get the right hair dryer here. So I'm going to mute you. Uh, I just don't want you to hear all that noise. Okay. Now the only reason why I thought I would dry that is because if I wanted to add more color through here, if that is wet, it's going to bleed right into it. And I could use a different uh, composition to show you, but I thought since I'm working on this one, why don't I just continue with it? 
And it is wet, so it probably will bleed, but you'll get the idea. So I'm turning the paper so I can have better access to areas. And then go back into my color. So look at, let's look at the color here. So I have quite a bit of color. Is that enough color to do what I want? So what I'm going to do is add to the existing color. I'm going to take that uh, permanent alizarin crimson, a little quinacridone magenta, and throw that in. And as I did this, I'm thinking, I might have a little too much water. It might not give me the richness of color that I want. So I have to evaluate that. But I'm going to work with what I have here. If we see this puddle, you can see how much water is in there. All right, let's go ahead. And I, I want this to be richer than what we have here. So I remember when I mentioned something about a medium value? I'm looking for not just a light and a dark. I want a range of values through here. I'm going to grab this. Let's throw a few brush strokes in. Now you can do that, but if you do this, we need to soften that, and that's wet on dry, because otherwise we end up having a line that we don't want. You don't want to drip on top of this, because otherwise you'll have a spot, and you'll be very unhappy. I'm taking my water, bringing my water all the way down along that edge, and if I need to soften it, if it's just still too hard, I'm going to press a little harder like that, just so I can force it to not be so straight. And I'm not too worried about whatever's happening down here because I know that's where a shadow is going to go. Now, if we look at the surface here, I need to take care of this, but I want to show you the surface. Let's see if you can see that. It's very shiny there, and it's not as shiny there. So what that means is I'm going to have a blossom. So what I need to do then is lift the paper up, allow that water to accumulate somewhere, and then let it run. I can either get rid of it, like with a hand or a towel or anything I need to, or a brush. And then if I moved it this way, then that highlight's going to disappear, and I could just direct it. Down here we have a line, and I'm just going to go ahead and soften that. So that is how I would start building that color up. And I don't know if you need to see that shadow in or not. That might be just enough for you for today. Why don't you let me know? I think, let's see, what do we have here? Those edges, let's see, what do we have here? Um, can I, can I show you what I would do if the back, I see, I'm th sorry. Go over the background, okay, yes. And uh, those edges is what I try to get rid of. Oh, that one with that, uh, okay. So, Janet, are you talking about an edge like this? You can either unmute yourself or write it in the chat. Yes, that's the one. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at it. So what I'm thinking is that doesn't really bother me right there. But if it did bother me, I have a couple options. I can either just come in and add that shadow, which I could do. Or um, I have a feeling you'd want to know how to get rid of it. So if I wanted to, I could just take my brush. Here I'm taking a number 30. And I'm going to go over it just a little bit like that. See if anything lifts. And if it doesn't, what I could do is take a magic eraser like this, just a little one, the original one without any detergent in it. And I could just go over it and just gently, but I don't want you to um, do too much to this. I think it's getting way too fussy. So I'm going to not do anything there. We'll leave that alone for just a second. Then I'm going to come in with my shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and take my permanent alizarin crimson, add to it with my quinacridone magenta. I'm 
Okay, and then remember I said you could take a little bit of the Windsor Violet Dioxazine. Now that will darken it. The problem with, uh, with it is if you use too much of it, it can dull everything down. So we're just going to take a tiny, tiny bit of that. I actually like that a lot with the quinacridone uh, magenta, but we have a little bit of that permanent alizarin crimson in there, so we don't want to get carried away with that. All right, so I'm going to go wet on dry. I'm just going to clean up that line. We've got a good storm out there. So that is pretty solid and I'm thinking, would that be flat? Do I want more water in there? Do I want more medium values? <laughs> Those are all things that I'd be thinking about. And then I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to change it. Like I'm not going to draw it on, otherwise it's too perfect. I'm going to allow the amount of pressure on the brush to carry that line and to change it. And then I'll go right along, right on top of that area. And then pull it down. And everybody's going to have a different idea of what they want. So to me, that's not very important. I'm just going to go ahead and clean that up like that. Take that number 30. I do need to carry that color out a little further to the whole shadow, so maybe I should think about doing that. So I have that little, little bottleneck right there. I'm just going to add some water. And then I'm thinking I'll add a little water here because that's a large area and then trying to add my color in this area, I might not be able to work as fast. So I'm getting my water in there and then I'll take my number uh, 20 and let's get some color in here. I'm also thinking about do I have enough color in my palette right now? So here I've got one of those little points. Do I want to leave that in there? Do I want to reshape that? Those are the things I'm thinking about. And do I want to go darker? So if I'm trying to figure it out and I don't know what exactly what I want to do, what I might do is take my number 30 and just soften a little bit of that. Maybe just a little bit. And then I'm trying to unify all that shadow. I'll bring that down. Right through there. And a little bit of that Windsor Violet Dioxazine. Like how bold do I really want to go? Those are the things that I would be thinking about. Okay, so this is a little bottleneck right there, so I can it gives me time to work. Then I'll take that number 30, remove some of that water, bring it in here so it can move around, and see how far do I want to go up on this side. So I'm going to take that water and bring it um, up here. And I'm trying to decide do I want to start in the top or the bottom. So just have some water right there for a second. Move the color around so those values can shift. Then take more of that permanent alizarin crimson. Bring it in there. I need to break it up so I don't have any little chunks of color. Get some water in there, tiny bit more of that Windsor Violet Dioxazine, mix it in very well, or really well. And then I'm going to go along the top here, and why I'm going darker along the top is because I'm thinking about how I want to roll this over. I'm also thinking that that might have a little too much red in there, maybe I want it to be a little more pink. So I'm going to add, also add a little more water. Okay, 
wet on dry. Okay, this is a big area and I really want to take care of this area so I'm going to hold off with that bottom area for just a second. I'm going to play with my brush stroke, go a little wider and thin. All right, I really like that yellowed, so do I really want to cover it? So what I could do, I'm going to go wet on dry, but what I'll have here is a lighter value. I want to see that. So I'm just to add more water in it, and it's definitely still not going to be that yellow, but I'll just add more water so it's a lighter value. More water right down there. So move. Okay, so for my Tucson friend, where it's drying maybe here and it's a puddle there, I would encourage that water to move. And then I'm going to go a little darker right down here. Okay, so this is my uh, foundation of my shadow. Then I would let it move. Now, if that is too large of an area for you to work with, break it up into areas where it starts to bottleneck, and then when it gets to that area, just use clean water and let it... Uh... Let's see if I can show you here. So like, let's say you have a tight area. Apply your color, however you're going to do it, to that little bottleneck. And then use clean water, remove that excess, and then just draw it out to like an invisible line down there. And then it gives you time to be able to work with those areas. I'm going to remove that extra water right through here and up there. Okay. Are there any questions on that? I always do the, a lot of the wet and wet when I do that. And so this is very interesting to me to see how you can get those vibrant colors without the glow coming from the uh, paper as much. You mean so how it doesn't disappear, that glow? Yeah. 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 Okay, so I like to paint vibrant too. I say hold, so, hold on for one second there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm muting all the background, the little puppy in the background. I'm going to mute them. All right, so Sharon, so you that was helpful for you? Yes, it helps a lot. Okay, I had, um, I had I usually don't work that much on dry because I don't want to get it too opaque, but. The way you do it, you're not getting it opaque. You can still see the... You need to have enough water in there, yeah. Okay. All right. Does, and then does anybody have any other questions? You mean I answered them all? <laughs> <laughs> all right, everyone. I'm going to let you all go so you can go ahead and paint and... Uh, and have a great uh, time. And if you're in my rock, sand, and sea glass, I'll see you tomorrow. And... You know, just take one course at a time. That works, too. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Okay, everyone. Until next time, have fun and happy painting. Bye-bye. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that you enjoyed yourself and learned a lot and had some fun. Now, if you're interested in more of these podcasts, make sure to subscribe to the channel or go to my website, BarricadeO'Connor.com. Now, if you happen to be interested in the full course, I do have a non-interactive version available for you right now. You'll have lifetime access and can go at your own pace. You'll be able to find it in the show notes. And if you want to upgrade to an interactive course, you can always do that a little later. So until next time, have fun and happy painting.